All right, welcome back to another Bloody Shed video. So today's video, uh, we will be finishing off all these shock mounts. Um, I was just waiting for this, uh, the remote res mount. Um, so thanks to Gippsland CNC cutting for that. Um, but I've got to drill and tap some holes, if you can see, in this top plate. Um, so I couldn't weld any of that on the car yet because I have to pull it off and drill and tap the, the holes in it. But the future, um, future versions of this shock kit, um, if you were to purchase something like this, I am going to get them to put the, uh, the bolt pattern on top already. So, um, yeah, you won't have to drill and tap anything. But, um, yeah, I sort of didn't know how I was going to mount the res until it was all in the car and whatever. So that's why I've done it this way. But um, the first thing I want to do is... I'm going to actually put the springs back in it and get it rolling and roll it out of the shed. And then um, I've just got to check at full droop with the tyres on. So I'm going to lift the front of the car up um, so the suspension's at full droop. And then I've got to go left hand down. So that's my only concern is because uh, obviously the way the panard works at full droop, the diff goes to the driver's side, um, the, way that, the way the arc works of the panard. So at full droop, um, it obviously pulls this left hand wheel closer to the chassis, which is also closer to the shock. So um, that's something I can't check in the shed because I need the tire on it. I've done a bit of measuring in that um, and it seems like yeah, it should clear, probably be pretty tight, but it should clear. Um, but yeah, I don't want to just go off the measurements. I'd rather just put the wheel on there and turn it and just make sure. So. We'll do that first and then, yeah, I've got to cut the top mounts back off all the tacks and then weld it all out, weld the res mounts together. And yeah, then it's right to go back on the car. I've got to clean all up, ready to weld on the car. Um, I've sort of only got about four or five hours in the shed this morning because we've got somewhere to go this Arvo. So I'll be prepping it all, hopefully get it back in the car. So then tomorrow I can just weld it all out and then hopefully finish the job. All right, well, I've just tacked these res mounts together, just so you know what they look like. Um, I'll show you, obviously, when I cut the, the top plate off to weld it on the bench, um, obviously, yeah, I'll drill and tap some holes and I'll show you how they go on. Uh, it's definitely an overkill just amount of res, but at least it, it looks good and yeah, the whole kit, when it comes together, actually looks like really nice and it's uh, a quality kit, so. This is what I gave him, which is pretty funny. So, and that's what it turned into. Um, yeah, I didn't, I just said, oh, whatever for the, for the top. So they designed this little top piece, folded up to mount the res. And because the Pro Fender res is a three inch, it's a pretty big, um, pretty big seat for it. I might put a little bit of rubber in there so it's not steel on steel, but anyway, it's fine. It fits pretty snug. And um, yeah, there's two, the two little, if you can see that, the notches and uh, yeah, hose clamp just goes around the whole lot. So yeah, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll show you when I cut the top mount off, which I'm about to do now because I need to weld all that out. But um, yeah, they come up good. It's finally sitting back under its own steam. Um, obviously 35 on the other side. But 37 on this side, this is the side I want to check. Um, it actually looks, yeah, it looks nice with the 37s on it. I did check the shaft exposed on the shock and it's about five and three quarter inches. So that is like perfect. That's exactly where I wanted it um, because um, yeah, I always leave, like, like I was saying in the other video, I always leave a little bit of shaft exposed when it's at full bump, just in case um, for like a hard hit. So three quarters of an inch is like 19, I think, or 20 odd mil. And when it's um, on the full bump with the car jacked up, there's about 18 mil of shaft exposed. So um, what that's saying is I've got five inches of up travel on the dot pretty much. And then, um, yeah, having that 18 mil of shaft exposed is to allow for like a super hard hit if it was to ever happen. So you don't bottom the shock out, but yeah, 
Um, the shock does have a little rubber bit on the bottom just in case, but that's not to be used because if you case out the shock, that's drama. So what I'm gonna do is just back this out of the shed. Um, I don't have a shock on the other side. I've just got a motorbike tie down there and I've just limited it to uh, where full droop would be, uh, 30 inches eye to eye is fully open. So I just had it down and measured it up and, and tied the motorbike tie down up. So yeah, I'll back it out, I'll lift it up with the forklift. Pretty much, I just gotta lift it up, go left hand down, check for clearance, and um, yeah, we're pretty much sweet. All right, so you can see it's relatively tight. There's still a bit of clearance there. Um, yeah, if you can see all that, it's sort of hard to get a good view on it. There's still a little bit of room. Um, what you got to remember is when the correct shock's in here, it's going to be, this res tube's going to be on the uh, inside, and then the bypass tubes will be on the outside. And uh, with the bypass tubes, they're 10 mil narrower, uh, like closer to the shock body. That gives you another 10 mil there. And um, yeah, there should still be plenty of room there. I'll see if I can set the camera up and I'll let the car down and you can see as it goes down, it gets further away from that because of the way the panard works. And the tire, as you can see, hopefully, the tire um, hits the radius arm anyway. So uh, I could back the lock stops out to touch. That would help that problem. Not that it's a problem, but that would help the clearance here heaps. And obviously with 35s on, there's gonna be even more clearance. So um, yeah, obviously we're not running these big side lugs on the 35, so. So you can see quite clearly in that video that yeah, as the suspension goes up, the the diff moves across this way, gives you more clearance because you can see there, there's still plenty of room. And like I said, yeah, with the bypass tubes on the outside, um, there's an extra 10 mil there. But yeah, what you got to remember is how often are you at full droop and full lock? Not very often. Um, maybe if you're stuck on a log or something like that, or yeah, there's not really a time that I can think of where that would be an issue. Um, obviously at full droop, if you flex up that side, um, the the wheel the peel out but if you flex up this side the wheel will sort of peel in um but that'll be up and the panard as it goes up will shift the diff across anyway so you got plenty of clearance there uh, that's all right to uh, to weld up so i'll get into that all right so i have flexed it out because i couldn't help myself and um gets close but like i said you get an extra 10 mil there so there's probably 10 mil there plus 10 mil, so there's still 20 mil there. Um, the other shocks, the other side's fully extended. It's still a little bit off the bump here. I've still got to extend that up. Um, but, yeah, I don't think, well, I don't think I've ever managed to flex out uh, the front of a patrol on the bump at one side and fully extended the other side. They just don't do it. So I think that'll be all sweet. Uh, no issues there. And I did, yeah. I'd, I actually jacked it up further, but um, put load on the wheel, so I couldn't film. But anyway, yeah, I jacked it up, got it pretty close to the bump, and the yeah, other side fully down, and it just misses enough, probably 10 mil when it's all jacked up, so should be sweet. Um, yeah, there'll be no issues there. But um, yeah, anyway, put it back together, get it back in the shed, and start welding up. Look at this bloody pristine weather. Oh, if only we're out driving. Oh. Alright, so I've got one side welded out. Um, it's all yeah, pretty much ready to go on the car. Um, I've just got to do the right hand side, but yeah, we'll get to that. Um, and I did weld up these res mounts. So they actually come up really good. They look really nice. Um, I just got a drill and tap. So I was saying earlier, two bolts there, two bolts there, but on. Um, if I get any more of these cut out, uh, that bolt pattern will be in the top plate here, so you won't have to worry about drilling and tapping. And what that also does is um, 
yeah, if you bolt this down, that gives you a pretty good indication of where this shock tower is supposed to be, or, you know, it is on my car. Um, so, yeah, that's really, really good. I'm looking forward to, to getting all this in the car, but I've got a bit of three inch steel there, and, you know, which is the same size as the reservoir. Um, the Pro Fender ones have a three inch res. So that sits in there nice. Um, yeah, shouldn't, shouldn't um, cause any rubbing issues. But like I said earlier, I might just put a bit of rubber in there um, just a little strip, which should, should sort it out. And then, um, yeah, hose clamps around. You can see the little little notch out here, little notch. So two hose clamps around there and holds it all in. Well, I've got to head off. Uh, I've got somewhere to be this Arvo. So that'll um, do for the work today. But stick around and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, I managed to make it back in the shed this morning pretty bloody early. Um, yeah, a bit under the weather, but... That's fine. Uh, I have to get this done. This is the last day I've got, um, last full day before we leave in like three days. So all this has to be done today. Otherwise I'm not going, which is not gonna happen. So um, yeah, I finished off doing all that, drilled and tapped some holes this morning. So that bolts down there. Um, and yeah, I've just welded that out. Uh, so I'll just clean that up and then yeah, drill and tap some holes in that. And then pretty much it's just, yeah, clean up the chassis to make sure everything's nice, ready to weld to. And um, the parts that I oxied off, uh, like the original shock mounts and that, I just got to make sure that's all nice and clean because obviously once that's welded in, um, some of the spots you cannot get to. So that's what's going on this morning. Um, yeah, I'll probably check back in when I'm welding these things onto the car. Well, I've been getting very carried away, um, mainly because of time. Uh, I really just didn't have time to film anything. So um, yeah, it's all pretty much done. So this is a little limit strap bracket that I put in. Um, if you can see, it's got a hole in it. Embraced on the front there. So a clevis will bolt into that with the limit strap. And then the other end of the limit strap will be on the, um, the radius arm there. But um, I'm not sure when they're coming, hopefully tomorrow, so I can do that before we go away. And I just dodgy spaced my bumps up with a bit of Teflon added to the body block. So, um, yeah, it's an extra 15 mil. I could go 10, it didn't really need to be 15, but that's all we had. So that's going to do for the trip. Uh, I'll get some proper ones made up and bolted on so they look a bit nicer because uh, that's a bit dodgy. But, yeah, it's all painted up. Um, I've only got to do the limit strap bracket on the other side, which I've already cut out. And that will probably wrap the day up, but yeah, I'm extremely happy with how it looks. Looks good with the shock all bolted in and painted up, so very happy. And uh, yeah, this is what the coilover looks like in there. So it still fits all right. The fitting is not ideal and the res hose and that's not really ideal, but it's still um, still plenty of movement, so hopefully that lasts. Um, yeah, like it's only for this trip, and hopefully uh, the bypass, this left-hand bypass shock will be here around mid to late April. Um, so yeah, that should work out good because I should have the rest of the stuff done and uh, panel beaters and that. So the car should be yeah on the home stretch by then. So I'll um, yeah mount this last little bit of plate for the limit strap and then um, see what else I can get up to before I run out of time. Also, probably something I didn't mention in the last video, um, if you actually want to measure up shock lengths, um, what you could do, no, what, yeah, what you could do is um, put your car on the bump stops. Um, so say if you wanted to run 37s, um, and space it to suit. So um, what you do is jack your diff up, um, cut your guards to suit, usually just the back here and a little bit at the front, that's enough. Um, space your bum stop to suit the tire. And then once you've sorted that out, once you know, yep, plenty of clearance with the tire, um, then all you have to do is measure the, the eye to eye or pin to pin on the factory mounts, pin to pin length closed. 
So that'll give you yeah, a closed length at bump stop. And then um, yeah, you just got to work out what shock works best with that, um, with your bump stop spacing for your wheels. And then, um, yeah, it's as simple as that. You, you can buy the shock that's suited to your bump stop spacings. And also, if you already have springs, um, you can measure, yeah, your pin to pin at ride height and then do the same at bump. And then you can work out also what shock length works. Uh, you might have to space the bump a little bit more to get um, like the right length shock to fit in there. Cause obviously at ride height, you don't want, um, yeah, not enough down travel. So you, you might have too short of a shock at uh, ride height and you won't get any down travel. But yeah, that's another little thing that you can do if um, you're measuring up for shocks. There's yeah, there's a few different ways you can do it, and I didn't mention that in the other video. So, uh, well, yeah, I've bloody had enough. I've been in here for like 13, 14 hours working pretty hard. So, and uh, yeah, I wasn't feeling that good this morning, and it definitely hasn't gone away. So, uh, I've had enough. Um, there's nothing really left to do major. Uh, the bolts I got were just a little bit too short, so I get some longer bolts. Um, bleed the brakes. Yeah, a couple small things, nothing like that. But tomorrow after work, I'll show you uh, how I mentioned what happens to the rear sway bar. Um, I'll fix that tomorrow after work, and I'll show you that. So stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, the car's pretty much on track. We're going in three days, and I've really only got one night after work, maybe half or another night, because I want to. I want to pack because we're leaving at like three in the morning so i want to pack the night before um so yeah i am definitely pushing to get it done but you anyway, know i think we're i think we're on track so we'll see you tomorrow night all right we're back this is the last night i've got to prep the car because i'm packing tomorrow night um i'm just tinkering with this sway bar uh the rear mount which i'll show you what happens to them now because um, yeah, I fitted the heavy duty uh, 24 mil sway bar, uh, factory 16 mil. Puts a lot of extra load on the sway bar mounts. So this is what happens. So it's all cracked out around the hole and it was actually a bit bent, pushed up on the sides. So actually I'll show the other side quickly. And this happened like last year or whatever to the other side. But if you can see, I've already put a bit of four mil plate on it. Um, Cause yeah, they, it, 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 it cracked all that and punched it through. So unfortunately that's what happens when you run a heavy duty sway bar because yeah, the chassis mounts weren't made to have such a heavy sway bar on them. So. Um, unfortunately, that's just what happens. Um, you've got to keep an eye on the mounts uh, where they join to the chassis as well because that can crack off too. Um, but yeah, it's all it's pretty simple fixed, but you just got to keep an eye on it. Probably preventative would have been the thing to do. But anyway, that's, uh, that's what I'm here for. So I've just cut up these three bits of plate. Um, yeah, one, one for underneath and then one either side, which will go something like this right, if you can see that it'll just run along underneath of the chassis there a bit more strength um, and yeah stop this happening again and that um, that's job done so it's all in job done that won't break off anytime soon I was uh, planning on putting the limit straps in the front. Um, I was pushing pretty hard to get them before Easter. Uh, and they did, they came today, so I was pumped. I was gonna come home and put them in. But yeah, unfortunately they've sent me the wrong stuff. Um, yeah, two different length straps. And there's no clevises and things like that in there. So a bit of a bummer, but yeah, it looks like Easter we're running with no limit straps, but I'm sure you'll just see me put them in in the future. Oh, well, that's it. Um, yeah, shocks are in. Everything's pretty much done. I've just got to put it on the hoist and do a quick bolt check. And then oil and water, check that sort of stuff. And yeah, we're right to go. So I did sort of press on the car and it feels like way better. Uh, but obviously I'm going to have to tune it and I'm not going to do any sort of tuning 
uh, with the coil over in the other side. I've got to wait for the other shock. And even the rear shocks, I'll wait for them before I start touching everything. So at the moment, it's sort of just a bit of a band-aid fix at the moment, slap together job so I can go to Easter. But it is what it is. That's just how it's going to roll for now. Um, hopefully, yeah, the rear shocks have been after Easter and the other one as well. Um, so I'll be putting that up when I get them. And then after that's all installed and I do a bit of tuning, then I can um, yeah, give you a bit of, bit of a review and see what I reckon about them. And yeah, if you're chasing some of these bypass mounts, um, hit me up on Instagram or whatever. Um, there's been a few people interested in it. So um, yeah, it's obviously no chopping of the inner guard and fits a 10 inch coil over four inch coil. You could go to a three inch if you don't mind having about four and a half inch up travel. But yeah, um, four inch spring is what I've made it for. So hit me up if you want a mount or anything like that and I'll sort yours out. But uh, there, that wraps up this video. Um, like I said, everything's done. So uh, do all the normal YouTube stuff that I always bang on about. And don't forget to subscribe if you're a new viewer and hopefully see you in the next video, which will be the Easter trip.